Some of you may know this about me, some of you may not, but not so long ago I taught myself how to code managed to weasel my way into a job as a software developer inside of the tech job market. Now this is pretty coveted, a lot of people want to do it and I think it's a great thing to do. And in this video I'm going to share with you everything you should know if you want to get your first job as a self-taught developer. Now this will also work if you're looking to get any job as a developer, uh, whether or not you have experience. And the main three things we're going to cover in this video, first and foremost, is what you need to know to get a job in the first place. Number two is when should you start applying for jobs? A lot of people leave it way too late and they could have had a job much, much earlier. And number three, what is the most effective way to apply for jobs to land your role as a developer? So it should be a weapon of a video, loads of good advice, and by the end of it, you will have all the knowledge you need, you'll be extremely well equipped to go out there into the vast open ocean of jobs available on the, you know, all the job sites and land your developer role. Now, first questions first, what exactly do you need to know to get a job as a software developer? And it's a really interesting question because the answer is always changing. Tech evolves extremely quickly, especially with AI coming out at the moment. What you need to know is never a fixed answer. And I'm going to give you an answer for this current snapshot in time. If you're looking to get a job as a software developer, specifically a full stack software developer, you need to understand front end and you need to understand back end technologies. On the front end side, that's predominantly going to be JavaScript, HTML, CSS, and some front end JavaScript frameworks such as React. React is definitely the most popular. Another good one is Next.js. Both of them are very cool. As for the back end, back end can be done in just about any programming language, but normally there is a framework, a back end uh, server framework that you'll learn adjacent to the programming language. If you're already learning JavaScript for the front end, then I'd recommend Node.js for the back end. And if you can do all of that, plus some database stuff, either a SQL or NoSQL database system, and deploy it live to the internet, then you should be in tip top shape. That's all the knowledge you should need to get your foot in the door and get your first job as a developer. <clears throat> now, in saying that, you know, before I commented that the tech always changes. So how do you know what you should be learning? Well, first and foremost is that you should check out the roadmap because the roadmap is always updated and maintained. It teaches you everything you need to know to get a job as a self-taught developer. So whatever's in the roadmap is what you should be learning. But that information is basically created from research where, you know, if you go to LinkedIn and look at hundreds of jobs, you'll find some core requirements amongst a lot of them. And that's the technology that's recommended for you to learn. So basically you have a huge pool of job applications. You've got all the relevant technology that people are looking for, all of those skill sets. And having been in the involved in the recruitment process for hiring software developers, the thing that is most critical is that the expertise and stuff that you have in your resume needs to match what we're looking for in this company because that's just going to mean that you can effectively integrate into the workflow of the company and you'll get hired in no time. So check out the roadmap that has everything you need to know. You can go through, check off all the items and that should have you sorted for question one. What do you need to know? Now, before we dive into the most effective way to get a job, First, we're going to talk about when can you start applying for jobs? You want to start as soon as possible. But what does that even mean? So if you want to get a job, the core requirement that you have to meet is you have to find a way to demonstrate credibility. You have to be a credible candidate. And the only way, you know, if you don't have an accreditation, you don't have a qualification, the way that you prove your credibility is by, you know, proof of concept. You have projects, portfolio projects specifically. When I got my job, my interviews were literally just me raving about how awesome my projects were. They were appalling, but I thought they were, you know, the best thing on planet Earth. Uh, so it's critical that you also have projects that you can show off. You can show the code base. You can show the challenges that you've, you know, conquered uh, or overcome to deploy them and have them live and functioning on the internet. Most big 
tech companies are just a bigger version of a lot of full stack personal projects. Uh, so that's basically point is, is that if you can get some projects together, you can suddenly start to really demonstrate your credibility. And as soon as you have projects in a portfolio that you feel confident showing, then you can start applying for jobs. Now, if you're desperate to get into tech, the way I'd recommend doing this is start off, this is how the roadmap is built as well, start off learning front-end development, do some front-end projects, get a front-end portfolio prepared, start applying for front-end jobs, learn the back-end stuff, build some full-stack projects, and then you can start applying for full-stack jobs if you haven't already got a front-end job already. Once again, if you want to know exactly what projects to build, I have a video specifically for that linked in the description down below, so be sure to check that out. So that's the first two questions answered. What do you need to know? We've covered that. Go to the roadmap. Number two, how do you know when you're ready to start applying? Basically, do you have stuff that demonstrates your capability? If yes, start applying today. Now, number three, this is arguably the most important question. What's the most effective way to apply for jobs to actually land the role? And there's a bit of a process that I recommend for this. The first thing that you have to understand, there's a lot of mixed messaging on the internet. I often see people coming out raving saying, this resume got me a job at Fang, a Fang company. And I'm just going to come straight out the bat and say that that is misinformation. The resume gets you the interview. The interview is what can guarantee you the job. So a lot of people end up spending all their time on their resumes and cover letters and all that kind of stuff, thinking that that's going to be, you know, their golden egg, their golden ticket into the job. It's actually not where you should be dedicating a lot of your time. So to cut down on the time, just, you know, linked in the description down below is hire.sh. It's my platform. It helps make this process incredibly fast. I'd recommend checking it out. Just, you know, sign up free, try it out, see if you like it. It will save you countless hours in your job hunt. Now, so we've trimmed down on the cover letter and resume. What are we actually meant to be doing then? This part is twofold. It's all about A, your public presentation, your personal image, and B, networking. Now, in addition to credibility, the thing that will get you a job is a personal attachment to you. So if people have met you and they like you, but how do you get people to know you, especially randoms on the internet, if you can't get an interview in the first place? Well, this is where most of your time needs to be spent. And basically there's two things you have to do. The first part, this is absolutely critical is whenever you apply for a job at a company, you've you know, prepared your application with hire.sh, you submit it, it takes about two minutes. This is where you got to do the hard yards. You have to find someone to reach out to that's involved in the recruitment process. It could be the CEO of the company, the hiring manager, send them a message and say, you know, I saw this job was posted. I'd love to have a chat and learn more about the opportunity. I feel like I'd be a prime candidate, you know, and send a connection request on LinkedIn. Now, if you want a specific messaging template for that, that will also be linked in the description down below. You can just copy and paste it and send it. Basically how it works is free. You send a connection request and you add a note to it. A brilliant thing to do. People love the initiative. And if you can get a free informational interview, now this is not a job. You're talking about the role, but it kind of is a job at the same time. You can't approach it from that lens, but it's as good as an interview because an either either a legitimate interview or an informal informational informational interview, basically all you're doing is you're asking about the role, demonstrating your capabilities, showing what you've done, uh, and just letting them get to know you, which is critical. And if you can show that you're a cool person uh, and you have the skill set, why wouldn't they just pick you, you know, save them a lot of time and effort. So that's the first thing you have to do. Now, the second thing also extremely important is even when there aren't jobs advertised, you also have to find people on LinkedIn, hunt them down, someone who has your dream job, and also send them a connection request with a little note that says, hey, I love your job. I'd love to learn more about it. Would you be open to connecting and having an informational interview so that I could learn some more? A lot of people 
not everyone's going to take you up on this, absolutely, but a lot of people will give you their time. And now you should never come into these processes thinking that you're going to get anything more than an informational interview. But if you're a cool person, you know, you work on your communication skills, you show interest in what they're doing. Everybody loves to talk about themselves. So if you can get them on a run and, you know, take some interest, show that you're genuinely enthusiastic about what they do, chances are they might offer you an internal referral. Now, how this works is most companies have a process where uh, employees can recommend an external candidate to work at the company. And if that candidate is hired and sticks around for like six months, then both of you get like, you know, a load of money. So they have an incentive to find good people. And so if you can deliver yourself on a silver platter through this informational interview, often you can actually even get a job where there wasn't one in the first place. And this is the best way to combat even things like the job market. You know, if there's a hundred applicants going for a job, how many of them are going to be having an intimate informational interview with this one person? It's just going to be you. So it really allows you to separate yourself from the mean. You can, you know, become an outlier, which is what you want to be. And that's where the effort needs to go. That's where you have to go. The one last thing that I'll say is that if you aren't getting the success that you're looking for, once again, it's not about putting out more applications. You want to just keep them quick and efficient. I mean, obviously it's still a numbers game, do as many as you can, but the time should be spent on the networking and also the self-improvement. If you're not getting much interest on one of your projects and you start to realize that it's actually a bit, you know, a bit mud, make a new one out with the old and with the new, you know, add a new project that's even better than anything you've already done. That self-improvement, that self-development, you know, the improvement in your portfolio will get you a job. Anyway, that's my recommend. That's if I wanted to get a job in the current job market as a self-taught software developer, that's what I would do. Um, All the information you need is linked in the description down below. Now it's over to you to go out and do it. I believe in you. Uh, And if you, yeah, want to absolutely save some time on the resume and cover letter sections, then check out hire.sh. Anyway, thank you so much for watching the video. If you've enjoyed, smash the like and subscribe buttons, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace. Learning to code? If so, be sure to check out the Learn to Code roadmap or dive straight in with these videos. That's a good one.